So Daniel, what are you doing at Yale these days? How are you spending your time? You're an assistant professor there, and then you sort of double as chief scientist at HADAP, <laughs> so I want to go there, but look, tell me what's going on at Yale. Um, yeah, sure. So Yale, um, so, uh, so we, we're sort of expanding our group. Uh, so there's, there's two faculty uh, who are part of the database group. There's myself and uh, a guy named Avi Silvashat. So he actually wrote uh, one of the most popular, data, uh, most popular textbooks in the, in the database industry. Um, so he's, uh, so he's you know, a real legend in the field. He's been around for a long time. He came from uh, Texas and he was a VP of Bell Labs uh, before joining Yale. Um, so between the two of us, we have a, uh, uh, we have, you know, a very large lab. Um, we have four PhD students. We have uh, something like five, six undergraduates and, uh, and a couple other students who are sort of floating in and out. Um, so, you know, so there's a bunch of projects that we have going on. So certainly HadoopDB, uh, that was what Hadap was called before it was commercialized, uh, was, you know, was a major project. We also have several other projects too, which I, which I think are pretty interesting. So one, one project that we have um, is, is a project called Calvin, which is sort of looking at how to scale transactions. So it's not, it doesn't really fit so much in the Hadoop world, which is more focusing on the data processing and analytics, but, uh, but uh, there's still you know, one key problem, especially in the NoSQL world, is you know, how, do you, how do you issue transactions across you know, sort of a thousand machines uh, and, and scale that up? You know, today, the, the key value stores don't really support transactions. If you look at HBase, if you look at Cassandra, um, you know, or really any of the popular NoSQL systems, uh, you know, they, 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 they allow like, atomic operations on individual keys, but they don't really scale those operations across, uh, sort of across you know, thousands of nodes, at least not the transaction itself. You, know, you, can, you can have individual updates in thousands of nodes. You can't make sure that it all happens at atomically. Um, so, you know, so one project that we have going on at Yale is sort of trying to fix that problem. Uh, and uh, um, you know, we have one paper already on that, and we're sort of in the, in the middle of working on another one. I think that's a pretty cool project. Uh, another project which I'm actually going to talk about today uh, here at Hadoop World, um, at, I think it's at 3.30 p.m., uh, is, uh, uh, is sort of a project on graph database systems. So how do you... Uh, you know, how, you know. I mean, so we, you know, we basically figured out the relational model. I mean, I think, you know, you know, we, we sort of know how to build a data warehouse. We know how to do data processing and scale for relational data. Um, and Hadoop is great for sort of unstructured data. But you know, but now we have graph data. Graph data is becoming very popular. You know, we have we have social networks, we have telecoms companies, we have uh, we have linked data, which is like semantic web. Um, so there's all kinds of data which are now sort of best represented as graphs. So. Uh, so it seems uh, it sort of it, it seems like you know the, the one key sort of. Uh, research thrust that's going to have to happen in the database industry is sort of being able to figure out database systems for graph data. Um, so that's, you know, I have a student, Jaren Huang, um, who is uh, he's, he's doing his PhD thesis on that. Uh, and I'm going to present some of that work that we've done together um, today at Hadoop World. So that'd be pretty cool.